Your official station to talk Knicks. The Fan 1019 FM and always live on the free Odyssey app. Hi, Boomer Geo, coming to you live for the Bill Ford Tough Studio on the Fan and CBS Sports Network. I brought up earlier the rise to stardom of Frank Fleming, Frank the Tank of Barstool and how it all happened. And he was on his way to opening day at City Field a number of years ago. Could have been 2019, 2018. And he was screaming on the local news about how NJ Transit stunk. And then he got hired by Barstool and has just made this miraculous rise in the media world and he is someone we uh befriended during the pandemic and he popped on our pandemic zoom as a surprise guest to mark chernoff which he did not enjoy mark chernoff one bit uh and he just did this podcast with mike francesa the frank's walks podcast with mike francesa we were having fun with that because mike talked the entire time and i think frank might have gotten like three or four words in he also did it with jj watts so he heard us talking about him and he called us up so here he is frank good morning man how are you I'm doing fine, doing fine. Uh, you know, uh, the walks are doing really well. I'm, uh, I've lost at least 40 pounds, so it's it's been good. It's been uh, great. Uh, I mean, uh, the weight's down. That's that's uh, what the main goal is. Yeah. Now you've overall you've lost a, a lot more than 40. I know 40 with the with the walks, but overall, how much weight have you lost? Well, in 2016, I was uh, over 500. Now I'm. Uh, about uh, 340. Wow. Wow. Now, now, are you doing this naturally? Or are you taking the Ozempic? Do you have uh, diabetes as well or no? Well, I wish I was taking the Ozempic, but uh, my uh, uh, farm, I can't find it. I can't, I can't find it. My pharmacy's out of it. Yep. See, I right, so, but you, you don't suffer from diabetes or anything, do you? Oh, I do. I do. Well, I, oh, jeez. Yeah. See, this is why you need to get it then. You definitely yeah, need well, to get it. Uh,. My doctor has me like calling every pharmacy. Uh, they won't even help me get it. I mean, oh. it's this is what I'm talking about. This is just ridiculous. It's now become a designer drug, and those who have diabetes right. that need the drug can't yeah. get it. It's insane. No, 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 no. It, it's completely wrong. It's completely wrong. What's happening with this? That uh, I should be able to get it. I mean, it's it, it, and uh, basically uh, it's on back order so much it's hard to get. So, all right, Frank. Let me ask you uh, the the walks that you're doing with these different celebrities. Mike Francesa being one of them, my other colleague, uh, J.J. Watt. Which one did you enjoy mo- more? Well, I love J.J. Watt, but Mike Francesa, I mean, I, I actually studied broadcasting in uh, college. I just couldn't find a job right away, so I had to work as a court clerk. But uh, uh, Mike Francesa, I just listened to him for 30 years, and uh, uh, it's, it's like one of your idols you get to walk with. Yeah, you not only did you listen to him for 30 years, you listened to him for an hour straight. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. <laughs> you didn't get a lot of words in, man. Mike was just talking to you. Well, that's Mike. Mike is Mike is just uh, Mike has always been great. He's always been great at carrying the conversations, and uh, I especially loved what it, the part about the uh, NBA in season tournament. I mean, his his view on that was so spot on. It, he almost he almost uh, looked like me ranting at times. <laughs> <laughs> so the rant, the rants that you go on, and I do see them as Barstool posts them out there. I mean, they are hilarious. You know, do you ever regret ever putting that stuff out there when you act like that? No, I'm. Uh, and, and now we get the Mets basically trying to say that I'm the reason they they struggle because I'm in their head, and you got this this pitcher Trevor May, who who, who goes on every podcast. Uh, I must live in his brain twenty four seven. This this guy who is a total bum on the Mets, you know, I I I do something that the Mets actually don't do themselves is hold them accountable. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm with you, and I like a lot of people on the radio station are with you, and, and you've become sort of a mascot of the angry Met fan, which has been great because most of us sort of feel the way you are. But didn't you have certain guys, though, that you work with, like Kevin, like KFC Barstool, that tries to be positive, and then you're obviously negative and more realistic, and then you guys clash over that. Have you felt a sense of victory over Kevin in a way because things have turned out the way they have? over the last couple of years with the Mets? Well, I wish I was wrong. I wish Kevin was right. But uh, every year it becomes more apparent that I'm right. I mean, especially when uh, we're going to be watching uh, Pete Alonso become Pete Gonzo and uh, the Mets are going to be uh, 
probably as bad as they were in the late 70s. I think the Mets are going to go, are, are going to be, are we, we are in an era now where the Mets are going to be losing 90 to 100 games a year for the next 5, 10 years. So we saw what they did last year, Frank the Tank, as he joins us here from Barstool. We saw what they did last year, and they tried to spend the money. They tried to bring in the, you know, the A, the A free agencies and F free agents, and it didn't work. And then they traded some guys away. They're trying to rebuild their farm system. They're trying to do it a different way. You just don't have the patience for that, I guess. Uh, I'm tired of I'm tired of seeing Met players hyped up, big uh, big prospects, and because the Mets have such a terrible farm system, terrible player development, terrible, terrible scouting. Do you realize over the last 20 years, only 9% of the players they drafted made the majors? That is fewer than any other team by a large margin. And uh, then you get people like Brett Beatty. They try to tell you Brett Beatty's good. Brett Beatty, Brett Beatty can't even uh, catch a single uh, pop fly. He's terrible in the field. <laughs> they, 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 uh, and, and they hyped him up as being the next George Brett. The only thing the only thing that he has in common with George Brett, he's a left-handed hitting dirt baseman. He had, uh, and uh, I mean, his, and his last name is uh, he's got the name Brett in his name. I mean, he's not even close to being George Brett. I mean, George Brett. I mean, come, give me a break. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, Frank. So, Frank, here's the here's the thing. I just want to say, just from a practical standpoint, seems like every three or four years we get somebody else to run the franchise. So now David Stearns is coming in to run the franchise, and he's trying to rebuild the things that you're talking about that we've been lacking, and that is scouting, and that is trying to build from within, and that is trying to make key trades and have younger players. Uh, do we ever allow somebody like a David Stearns who comes in for the freeze? I haven't been here for six months, I think. Can we, can we give him a chance to see what he can do in a couple of years, or, or are we just going to be totally against everything he does? Uh, not if he lets Pete Alonso walk. Yeah. Well, all right. So that's a, that's a very good. Uh, here's a very good point for you. Uh, trade deadline comes. Obviously, the Mets are going to be out of it. Pete Alonso is going to be trade bait, uh, much like the Islanders had with John Tavares. Do you keep your best player, or do you try to make your team better by trading that player? I don't. I don't trust them in the trades. I don't trust them in the pro- uh, developing players. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you on that. I mean, I, it's going to be tough when that time comes, and I have to see what the return would be. But generally, when you trade away a guy like that, you never get the same back in prospects. This is this guy's going to hit 500 career home runs. The, the, the players they got, Drew Gilbert. This guy, this guy, come on, this guy is not. This guy is not going to even be close to being good. And and uh, and Luis Acuna there. The, the, does the name Wilton Guerrero ring a bell? <laughs> yes, I'm telling you, man. Listen, we can go on and on with these failed prospects and guys that they get in trades, and it's so disappointing. You do have a good point. but I mean, uh, I, mean I feel like that song that uh, uh, Kenny Rogers sung with uh, Julio Iglesias, to, to all the girls I know before, and to mention that sing to all the prospects that were big bust. Beautiful came singing up voice. And let us down. You hear that? I mean, he's just so talented. Yeah. yeah. What? You just, you're very talented. You're very talented. you got a beautiful voice, singing voice. Yes. Beautiful singing voice. You still drinking soda, man, or we give that up? Uh, I'm on diet sodas mostly, but oh. yeah. But it's still still a part of it, yeah. I mean, I know you love your soda. That's like the big thing for you, right? Yep, I don't drink alcohol, so I have one vice. Yeah, no, I, under, I understand. But what what you've done here is, is remarkable. Do you have a goal weight now that you're, you went from over 500 pounds to, uh, to 340? Do you have a goal weight? Uh, I have small goals. Okay. All right. Well, those small goals are attainable. That's the key thing. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I get down to my goal weight, and then I go down and I pick a new goal. That's how I'm doing it. All right. How's Dave Portnoy you know, treating you? You know, it'd be nice. Uh, I'm going to be doing more and more walks. I got more celebrities that we're going to be lining up soon. <clears throat> oh, nice. Uh, who is who is your, like, white whale? Like, who is the, the guest that you have to have on on Frank's walks? Frank walks. Well, I had to get you guys on a walk one time, and uh, I'm also trying to do uh, one of the walks I did was actually a charity walk for ALS. So nice. I, I, I'd love to do like uh, charity walks, and um, besides having you guys on, uh, maybe uh, a certain owner that uh, has blocked me on Twitter, Steve Cohen. 
Oh, Steve oh, Cohen yes. blocked you. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I remember seeing that. That would be incredible. I, I, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 instead of a sit down, an hour walk. Wow. Where, he, where I could give him a, a calmly a piece of my mind, and he could try to sell me on what he's doing. Let me tell you, right that now, would I'm, be a, a very happy. smart thing for Steve Cohen to do. Yeah, that would be a smart thing. And just be level-headed, be honest, which I, which I think Steve Cohen, for the most part, has been. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I think you recognize they made a mistake last year. You know, I was, I, you know, Gio was pointing out something, Frank, to me earlier this morning, just how popular you have become. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I think you realize that, but I don't necessarily know you know the the impact that you have over there at Barstool. And I was asking, uh, as we were just talking, how is Portnoy treating you? And, you know, have they actually up the amount of money that they're paying you to reflect your popularity? Well, the money will come. Uh, but that hasn't it, come yet? It, I, I get paid a, a, a decent salary, so I'll say that. But... Uh, the money, the money's coming. It, it, it's not. It's not like uh, that's uh, uh, an issue for me. And uh, Dave Portnoy, Portnoy does treat me well. In fact, uh, that's the next walk guest. Oh, nice. Oh, really? That's very good. I mean, Breaking is he going to try to tempt you with pizza? No, I guess not. Yeah, yeah, I guess not. Um, yeah, I guess not. Uh, I eat my pizza. I eat my share of pizza, but you know I'm the hot dog guy. That's right, hot dog, soda. That is that is his thing. Frank, I know, I know the person that you need to get for one of these walks if you can, if you can set it up, and I and, and if you could do it, it would be a it would be a big get for you. Uh, do you think you could get Dua Lipa to do a walk with you? <laughs> <laughs> if Dua Lipa does a Frank walk before she comes in here, then that's it. Then, then, then I'm officially giving up. That is a hands in the air. I'd, I'd be happy for Frank, but I'd be I'd be upset. What about Dan Marino? Would that be a good one for you? Oh, I love Dan Marino. That would be a great walk for him. For me, uh, uh, being a Dolphin fan. Yeah, I figured I that'd mean, be a that'd be a big get for Frank. Would be Dan Marino, and I'm sure. Like, what about like an '86 Met, like Keith or Daryl or Doc, one of those guys? Oh, I, anyone, anyone on the 86 match would be a great walk. I'd love that. Uh, of course, uh, hopefully we uh, Lenny Dykes would get to while I heard it. Yeah. He uh, has recently uh, had, had some uh, issues with his health. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a stroke, so hopefully we're yes. rooting for him. But Frank, it's uh, I'm glad you called in today. Uh, are you still mostly in New York? I know they opened that big Chicago office, but you're just hanging in New York. You don't go out there a lot, right? I go out to Chicago maybe uh, once every uh, month or so, or maybe uh, every two months. But uh, but uh, yeah, everything's going well, and uh, of course, like I said, Dave Porter treats me well. He was he even helped me get like a team on me, a team. So the team, uh, uh, Matt Jenks and uh, Mikey Belice out there in Chicago, they are like uh, are a big part of this, and they they're really helping to boost us. And uh, I think I'm going. I think things are going to the moon. I think. Uh, Forget the moon. We're going to Mars. Exactly. Yeah, I like it. Uh, just one final thing for me there, Frank. Uh, out of all the personalities over there at Barstool, where do you rank yourself? Like, you know, are you like, I, to me right now, you got to be a top five guy. Uh, probably in the top five, of course. Yeah. You have the, uh, you have, you have the, uh, the so-called core four, and I guess maybe I'm number five. I'm the, uh, I'm the, uh, the, the new guy on the block who's rising, uh, and, uh, and, uh, keeping, uh, New York. Uh, and, uh, and uh, relevant. Yeah, you know what, Frank? I'm with you, and I'm rooting for you. You are a great guy. As I mentioned before, some people say sarcastically, like, couldn't happen to a better guy. This would take the sarcasm out. You really, this rise to stardom couldn't happen to a better guy. And I'm, uh, we're all rooting for you, and we'll, uh, we'll be watching you, man. Thanks like for calling in. With? Another guy I'd like to walk with? Martin Brodor. <laughs> okay. All right. That's Marty Brodor, the big devil's guy. Yeah. Oh, there's this video I got to show you. Uh, yeah, so. Boomer. You know, so, yes. Uh, Frank, how funny was that? You just randomly, when you're wearing all your devil stuff, ran into like six New York Rangers in street clothes on in the city. That was awesome. Well, I thought they were Rangers. They actually turned out to be the Calgary Flames. Oh, was it? Oh. <laughs> Did you try to get uh, their goalie Markstrom for your team? Uh, yeah, that would have been nice. That would have been nice. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to get it done. I think I think they're going to get it done for you, Frank. Actually, before I ran into those Rangers randomly, and that's why I thought they were the Rangers. Yeah. Um, I saw Mika Zimbinajad signing a couple autographs, and then uh, he went off uh, on his uh, little scooter with a hockey stick down the street. Oh, jeez. He's on scooters? I don't know. I have yeah, no gotta idea. Got to get him off that scooter, man. It's dangerous. <laughs> All right, Frank. Good talking to you, man. Be in touch, right?
I wouldn't want to see Jack Hughes going down the street on a scooter. <laughs> exactly. Yes. He's smart. All right, Frank. Gonna-